The Atlantic Basin is record hot, and that is threatening the coral reef. What is going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about how the heat impacts the reef. Then we're going to talk about how hot we actually are. We are breaking records with how hot we are seeing things this early into the summer. It's being fueled by El Nino. That's the natural warming of the planet when El Nino is in play. But climate change also has its fingerprints all over that. If you're wondering... How does this impact me? Well, at the end of the video, we're going to break this down. It's going to have huge economic reaches, and also it impacts a lot of the other sea life. A lot of sea life depend on the coral reef, so we're going to talk all about that as well. Hey, before we get into the video, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that if you hit the like button. If you enjoy this content or find it helpful, that really does help us out a lot. All right, we're going to start things off with the actual sea surface temperatures as of July 12th. You're going to wonder why I mentioned the date, because if I click on that there and bring up what the water temperature is, it's 90 degrees. We typically do not see temperatures in the water that warm until the peak of ocean heating later in September. We have readings in the lower 90s in some spots out in the Gulf of Mexico, upper 80s towards the Bahamas, around 90 degrees into the Caribbean, upper 80s to around 90 degrees as well. Some of this uh, water is shallow. But the point I'm trying to make is it is way too hot, way too early. And again, we are breaking records, especially off of the Florida coast when it comes to the water temperature. And that is already putting stress on the coral. I'll talk about more of that in a second. Again, just talked about the record there that the temperature off the Florida coast is the hottest ever this early in the satellite era. I want to be clear about that. Obviously, Earth has been around for a long time, but in the satellite era, since we've been able to record the ocean temperatures, that goes back to the 1960s. All right, so when we talk about bleaching of this of the coral, okay, essentially the coral is starving when it starts to get into bleaching mode. That's obviously not good. As it starts to bleach, when we see these mass bleaching events, they typically happen around mid-August, and they do happen during El Nino years. I'm going to break that down uh, a little bit later on in this video, but they typically last four to six weeks. Now, we are starting off the bleaching season a month early, so that isn't going to be good. This last point on this slide here, and we're going to break this down to show you just how critical this is, and it's insanely and critical and really scary. Mortality becomes likely when sea surface temperatures are one degree Celsius above average for two months. Again, in a couple minutes, I'm going to show you why that matters, because we are way above that one degree Celsius threshold. This next graphic that I want to show you here uh, kind of tells the story. I'll bring this full screen so that you can kind of see. This is from NOAA Coral Reef Watch. My friend Derek Manzello sent this to me. I've been talking to him to get his expertise on how this heat is impacting the coral reef. And I'll bring out my arrow to show you this black line here is where we stand this blue line is where we start to see the bleaching threshold so we are and again that's not good for the coral reef that's when they essentially starve as that whole process starts going but we are way above the record there's that black line there i want to then bring your attention down into here this chart is very helpful this graph at the bottom here and you see the different alert levels here so the different colors that light blue meaning no stress when it turns yellow uh, a bleaching watch is issued when it's orange there's a bleaching warning okay that means that we're likely going to start to see bleaching soon you see that in the orange shaded color we've been in that since june but look at that little red sliver here. This is where we currently stand. We're at alert level one. That means that we have that bleaching likely. Alert level two, and that's on a, on a widespread scale. Alert level two is when we start to see widespread mortality of the coral reef. So whenever we talk about that in these bleaching events, they don't happen all the time. But when they happen, they typically last about four to six weeks from the mid-August through the rest of the summer until the oceans start to cool off naturally in the wintertime. But we've already started that process, so add another month onto that. So if we have, I mean, you do the math there, several months, an unprecedented amount according uh, to Derek Manzello as well. 
So not good news when it comes to the Florida coral reef. Here is more on that. And this is kind of what I was showing you. And I'm going to have a full breakdown on the temperature anomaly. I have an anomaly map for you so that we can see just how dire this is. Again, mentioned this just a second ago, that one degree Celsius greater than average for two months starts the coral reef mortality process. Okay? Starts to kill the coral reef. Once we get to two degrees Celsius greater than average for one month, it will also do that. And then for three degrees Celsius, greater than average, for about a three-week period or less, that will also kill the coral reef. This is where it gets really concerning. Look at the sea surface temperature anomaly. Once we start to see the purple, that is that greater than three degrees Celsius anomaly. Again, three degrees Celsius warmer than normal. And you clearly see right where we have the coral reef, Look at that. We have that purple showing up. That dark purple right there is four degrees Celsius above normal. That crazy anomaly continues towards the Bahamas and parts of the Florida Straits. So essentially, we could start seeing coral die around Florida in less than three weeks. Again, this video is being recorded on July 12th, so we're going to keep tabs on that. The only way to cool this water significantly and to kind of stop this process is if a tropical storm or hurricane and a series of those according to Derek Manzello came through to kind of upwell that cooler water temperature deeper in the surface obviously we don't want that to happen but that is the only way that we're going to be able to cool this temperature now some Saharan dust could come over and kind of slow the heating as the sun it blocks the sun a little bit that may kind of put a pause on it for the short term but these anomalies are absolutely insane. I want to talk now just about how expansive these anomalies are. And again, when you're looking at the orange and red here, this is where we have the greater than two degrees Celsius above normal. I mean, the Atlantic is jet fuel. If we were to get a storm rolling off the coast of Africa, it would go gangbusters. If we got a storm in the Gulf of Mexico, it would be have unlimited fuel basically. And again, it's July. We still have the entire summer to go. And that is what is concerning that again, we are starting this bleaching process a month earlier than normal when we see those bleaching periods. All right. So we're going to leave the Atlantic now. And I want to show you the, the root cause of this. The, at least it's the, it's one of the causes it's El Nino and El Nino. We can pick that up easily on satellite here. This is the sea surface temperature anomaly again, four degrees above normal right here we always focus on the nino 3.4 region that's out here so the it's not the strongest el nino on record was above two degrees celsius again the anomaly okay so we're not there yet back here we are but we're focused on the nino 3.4 region a lot of times for for weather but anyway the point i'm trying to make is you can see the el nino coming in hot it is strengthening rapidly typically once we get into el nino that is the natural occurring phenomenon that warms the earth okay so even way before climate change we had el nino we had the natural warming but what we are seeing here is that when we get these el ninos recently they are the anomalies that impact the earth are essentially supercharged so again we had mass coral bleaching events back in 1982 and 1983 during that el nino we of course had one during one of the strongest on record that was back in 97 and 98 had another mass bleaching event in 2010 and then another one in 2014 to 2017 so these are becoming more common again they don't happen with every el nino but that seems to be the calling card again for these mass bleaching events the point i'm trying to make and where climate change comes in again you can't blame everything on climate change i want to be clear about that that is not causing this it is enhancing this it's a shot in the arm it's a steroid so these anomalies that we would see with the heating of the earth naturally from el nino are getting hotter with every passing El Nino. That is scary. That is critical. And again, the coral reef are going to be significantly threatened. I talked about the stats earlier and just how scary it is uh, going forward. So we're really going to be watching that into the summer. And again, we're not hoping for a hurricane. We're not hoping for a tropical system, but that's what we need to upwell that cooler air that resides deeper into the ocean. Again, really scary stuff for the coral reef. All right. So you might be asking, all right, why do we care? We obviously care about tropical storms and hurricanes when it, result, when it pertain, pertains to the hot oceans, the hot Gulf, the hot Atlantic, but we can't see the coral reef unless you live 
on the coast of Florida. You dive down there. But these have huge roles. This has a huge role in protecting our shorelines from storms that come through and, of course, sea level rise brought on by climate change. Uh, other species also rely on this. A lot of fishes, lobster that eat, those stone crabs, they rely on the coral reef to survive. If they go, the reef goes, so does that. So do those species. And a lot of those species are extremely important to the Florida economy. So it, uh, economy. So it has that ripple effect. If we lose the coral reef, then we start to lose some of those species that rely on it. And then we rely on some of those species to eat that drive the Florida economy. And if we lose all that, we could have some big problems, again, from the circle of life standpoint. And then, of course, uh, to the wallet, to your wallet in Florida. Thank you so much, guys. I know there is a lot going on. If you want to take an even deeper dive, I'm going to have more on our website, clickorlando.com, from Derek Manzello of NOAA Coral Reef Watch. He provided me some great insight here on how this heat impacts the coral and just how critical things have gotten so early. Again, we shouldn't be seeing these temperatures until about a month from now. At least, we, I should say we shouldn't be seeing the bleaching when it comes to an El Nino until about another month from now, the middle of August, but we're seeing temperatures more indicative of the hottest point of the summer. That's more of September. So this is insane. It's really scary. And uh, we're going to have much more on that from Derek Manzello. A few quotes that he gave me uh, on clickorlando.com. I will post the link in the description and in the comment section. Again, expert there from NOAA Coral Reef Watch. Of course, they've been studying that for decades. And he, of course, has been doing it for a long time as well. Provided a lot of great information. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this con content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay updated on all things Florida weather, all things weather in general, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that, and we will catch you next time.